It's Tuesday morning. I got woken up at 10 to 4 this morning by noisy sex downstairs. I don't know how they're getting enough sleep because they were up and out the door at 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered. I was awake for ages after that, so we might need a nap today. It's also really, really warm again. I've had to start um, taking the grey water from my flat and putting it outside on my pot plants because they're just drying out so badly. I have about four or five buckets scattered amongst my pots outside to catch rainwater, but everything's dry. Everything is completely dry at the moment. And the only way for me to keep things alive now is to water them from water indoors. And using water from the sink, like after I've done washing up, and putting, what I do, I put the plug in when I have a shower, because I have a shower that goes over a normal size bath. So I put the plug in, I can catch all the water, and then I can decant that outside. I've got um, uh, a watering can, and I just scoop it up and put it in there. And that's fine. And I know the people going, oh, it's so much effort for so little. Why would you, why wouldn't you do that? This is how they get you. It's the convenience angle of everything. That's why you pay so much for everything. Doing things the long way round does save you money. Yes, it takes more time, but what's wrong with putting in the effort? We all want everything just so cheap and so quickly, like, let's just run fresh water out the tap for uh, for watering plants or let's not have any plants at all and then your water bill is high and you complain about your water bill being high so I know that I've talked recently about how mine's just gone up another pound or will be going up another pound I think it's in August and I'm not using any more water it's just that everything's still going up but um yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. So every day when I do the washing up, it's not a lot. I don't use a lot of water in the home anyway. But what I do have is enough to keep everything alive until the rain comes back. Uh, we have three or four days of hot weather. So that will be just enough to keep everything alive. And things like washing up liquid in water or, you know, the soap from the shower isn't bad for the for the earth. I'm not using bleach or, you know astringent cleaners or anything like that so and I've always done it since I've been here because I'm on metered water here I'm in control of the water if I didn't have metered water I'd just be watering whatever I needed to but because I pay for literally every drop I use I want to maximize the money I'm getting from that so that's what I'm doing so hopefully everything will survive because we have just enough water coming out of the flat on day-to-day -day usage that can go out on them and then hopefully around the weekend, I think Thursday it's supposed to rain, but the weather forecasts change so quickly. So that's that. This morning I am driving out, uh, I'm going to a fabric shop. I've had a dress commission. You know who you are. And I'm going to save most of that for a separate video because I'm going to do a video about... Um, how I do a commission. So I'm going to show you the project from start to finish. We're going to get the fabric, we're going to pattern it up, we're going to make it, la da 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 So that's a whole separate thing. And I'll put that on my business channel because it's a, a making thing. So once that's up, I'll let you know and then you can see kind of my process. Uh, I haven't done a commission in ages. I used to do loads of commissions, loads of uh, personalised alterations. I haven't done any in ages because because I don't have anywhere for people to have fittings. People tend not to have things done but when you get like something online so sometimes people will buy like a, a dress off me but they'll say um, can you just do this or can you just take up the hem can you just do that and I'm always happy to do that because I deliberately make everything in such a way that it can be altered so with this this particular dress in order for it to fit I need to make a brand new one and there are some specific pattern request and I don't have those sorts of patterns in stock so this morning we're going off to have a look and see what we can find in the stores I think it's going to be a bit of a 
it might be a bit of a struggle getting there. Major overwork starting this week. And they're shutting off this long main road where the shop is based in sections over the next two weeks. So I need to go this week because that bit is open. Um, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not going to take me hours and hours and hours to get there. But I'm up early. The shop opens at 10. Is it 10 or 9.30? I need to check that. And I want to make sure that I leave plenty of time. I'm going to check Google Maps because it will give me an idea what the traffic's like. Uh, but the schools are off, so hopefully this will help bring the traffic down a little bit. Tuesday morning. It's Tuesday evening. I've done my clean, and as usual, I've been to Morrison's. Uh, shelves were pretty bare today, actually, and I have a confession to make. I did really badly today. I bought all the wrong things. I don't know what was the matter with me. I went in there for vegetables, there was almost nothing there and I just did a circuit around the chill counters and came back and I walked past the bakery counter and normally at the time I go they haven't started putting out the discounts and today for some reason they were early. So you are going to be my confession today. I got my confessionary. I'm going to start with the good stuff first. Um, Skylar natural extra creamy yogurt that was two pounds twenty five for that. I mean that's just insane, isn't it? Look at the size of it. Two pounds twenty five. I got it for fifty seven p. So we're back on the roll with the yogurts. I also got uh, bean sprouts. This is one of the big bags of bean sprouts. That was a pound down to twenty five p. Um, Hazlitt, £1.30, now 33p. There was another lady looking in the counter, an older lady, and I asked her, what is Hazlitt? And she told me, she said to me, I think it's pork. It tastes like um, when you get pork with apple stuffing. It tastes like that, but it's edible, it's fine, it's cheap. Right, oh no, one more good thing. Uh, a smoked bassa was 198 down to 50p. That's a good sized bit of fish there. It's poor man's haddock and it does smell like smoked haddock so that'll do the job. Right, on to the bad stuff. I was so bad. So here we have two vegan sausage rolls or what they call two savoury vegan rolls. These were £1.50 down to 38p. Two rhubarb lattice pies were one pound, down to 25p. And the worst thing of all, probably, chocolate eclairs. These were two pounds, down to 50p. I haven't eaten chocolate. I don't know how long it's been. I haven't had any since I got back from my parents. I didn't have any when I was at my parents. So it's... I. I reckon it's been at least six weeks since I had any chocolate. I have no snacks in the house now. I've noticed a change in me. I'm looking for food less and keeping busier more, which is really good. I've started to notice that I am cooking my lunch and my dinner slightly later. So I'm not as fixated on those times when I used to cook. So lunch will be at 12, tea would be at 4. And I'm finding I'm getting less fixated, I'm being busier, I'm doing other things. So something's going right. And then I've done this today. Anyway, we all have blips. Uh, this all came to £2.78. So as usual, I will put all the information up there about the price I would have paid if I had bought all these at full price and how much I saved on the yellow stickers. That is it for Tuesday. Wednesday will be the usual, it'll be a morning clean. Um, I will not be hiking on Thursday because I hiked on Monday. Not sure about Friday yet, maybe if the weather's not too hot 
uh, where we'll go, but we'll see how we get on. I've already, I've just done a, a seven and a half mile hike. I'll see how I get on. I'll let you know. It's funny how some people equate living a simple financial life, not wanting to waste anything, and wanting to be a bit more mindful with money and resources as being poor or being a pauper. And I think once you get out of that rat race of stuff you realize that you just don't want it so i don't have a need for things like tv subscriptions lots of new clothes takeaways nights down the pub and a lot of that is to do with my personality i did all my clubbing days back in the 20s and all that sort of thing and I've slowed down a lot as I've got a bit older and I've discovered what it is that I actually want in life. And it's none of that stuff. And I do have a limited income, but it's enough to live on. This year, I hope to bring in about 16,000 and there will be enough, enough to put a bit back into savings and that will then roll on to longer term security and to next year because you never know what's around the corner next year we'll have new challenges because um, the universal credit will be gone in august this year and then i need to look at how i'm going to replace that section of money coming in and although it isn't an enormous amount of money it does make a difference so that's why I'm working now on rebuilding my business, which I've been badly neglecting, uh, looking at expanding on the other uh, income streams that I already have. I don't think I want to cut down my life any more than I have. I feel like I've got a nice balance now of spending versus income. And I just need to make sure that my income is able to keep up with that. It's not an enormous amount of money. And I'm very resourceful in how I use my money. But I get more enjoyment from saving it and investing it and making it work for me than I do in spending it and giving it to big, greedy corporate companies who don't care whether I go into debt or not. I don't have a need for a ton of stuff. I like my simple lifestyle. It's stress-free and I don't worry about anything. And if people think that living like that is being poor, then people have a very odd idea of the world. But I would imagine if you get caught up in living your life the way other people expect you to, then you probably do lose sight of it. I've always enjoyed, you know, make, do and mend and growing my own veg and things like that. That's always been a part of my personality. And I've only been able to really embrace all of that since I moved in on my own and was able to create my own rules and call the shots. Because before that, I was never with anybody who really understood it or appreciated it. I know there are lots of people out there who, who do and who understand it and who also live their lives like that. But I enjoy doing it my way, on my own. And it's just how I've become, as I've got older, more chilled, more... Um, Probably more singular. I know I've become more singular. At heart, I've always been a massive introvert. That's always been me. But it's very difficult when you live in different situations to embrace that. So it's only been six and a half years since I've been able to live the life that I want to live. And I still feel like I'm getting used to it. I'm still enjoying it. I'm still learning from it and understanding how it works and growing on that as well. So I've got the basics and I'm always learning new things to go with that. 
but some people just don't understand it and instead of trying to understand it or learning about it they throw out comments and tell you that you're you're an idiot that you're poor that you should that you're that you, you know and i think a lot of it is when people jump in on one video and don't have a look at the other videos and don't try to understand what's going on or the journey that's been involved to getting there there are a lot of very intolerant people out there and of course you know the internet social media is of course full of that because it's easy to hide behind an internet profile and make random comments and I think people that make comments like that particularly the nasty ones are you know they're quite angry people they've obviously completely missed something that I was saying and just have to have that knee-jerk reaction. It's easy to silence people here on YouTube if you need to. Sometimes I do. I have had to silence a few people because sometimes I think that some of the comments that people make are just attention-seeking. Um, so you you cannot reply but then you'll get other other commenters who will reply and that fuels their fire so every so often if, if i think someone's getting out of hand getting a bit weird getting a bit stalkerish um i'll just remove them from the system and that solves that problem because there's no reason why you should have to put up with it if you don't have to and if it's not adding anything to the conversation, I don't mind if it's people making constructive comments and criticisms and there can be a conversation. But if you're just throwing out a comment because you're in a bad mood or you just don't like the way somebody lives, that's, that's not constructive and not useful. So I will shut people down if I have to. It doesn't happen very often. I think I've only done it two or three times since I've been here. Um... But there are a couple of people waiting in the wings who um, who I may stop fairly soon because it's just getting a bit boring now. Um, and it's clearly people who just don't want to understand. They don't care. And I don't know, maybe they're lonely. Maybe they need attention. Anyway, so... That's my little update. <laughs> I wasn't going to comment on all this, but um, sometimes it's very tempting, isn't it? It's very tempting to uh, to make the old comment. Anyway, <laughs> onwards and upwards. Someone made an observation recently on one of my recent posts, and it was the one about um, how I was doing six months into 2024 and made the observation that the only reason that um, I'm kind of going to be earning more than I spend this year is because of universal credit and that's true as things stand at the moment with benefits and certainly the way it works for me and has done for this last year. I see it as a breathing space. It gives you an opportunity to sort yourself out. Um, I have struggled for the last year or so trying and failing to make my business work. I've had a huge mental block on creativity. I completely lost my mojo and I think that was probably a fallout from uh, end of 2018 I lost my studio and moved back home I had to completely re rebuild my business from scratch um, and I did that through 2019 and just as I was getting a good hold on that the pandemic came and 2020 was not a bad year but certainly mentally I think it was trying for everybody and of course, after the pandemic came an approach to normality for some people. And that's when things took a real tumble. So 2021 was not a good year. 2022 was not a good year. And it was really 
in 2022 and I just thought I've had enough. I can't keep living on my savings which is what I was doing at the time. I didn't understand how I could find work without giving everything up and going back into a nine to five job. And that 2022 is when I started to discover all the little side hustles that I do now. So I learned how to do work my savings better. I learned about surveys and market research. I found out about the clinical trials, all these little things that now go into that pot and make up what is work for me. Uh, last year was when I started doing the cleaning work and that was only because someone recommended it to me. I didn't even know that sort of thing existed. And so that gave me the mental breathing space to not worry about what the business was bringing in because I was making my money elsewhere and I was working on that and building it up. And then of course the managed migration from working tax credits came. I was on working tax credits. I knew that I was not eligible for universal credit as it stands as, as a thing, but there was this managed migration year which has given me a year of breathing space because the universal credit is paying better than working tax credits was. I know I only have a year, that year is almost up and it may be up by the time you see this video. But it gave me the space to know that I was able to pay for everything, continue to work on side hustles that needed more work and then work out what the hell I was going to do about my business. And as it turns out in the last couple of months suddenly I've had renewed enthusiasm for my business and I'm back working in it again. And this year has been a good year in terms of business. My website is now bringing in work. I'm getting commissions. I found other ways to sell, other places to sell as well. So that is on the up and universal credit for me, that protected year has been really important. Now that ends towards the end of August. I know that for the rest of 2024, I am covered. I know what money is coming in. I know that I will have earned more than I've spent. That's fine. 2025 is another year. Sorry I left you hanging there yesterday. I ran out of things to say and just thought, ah, I'll just switch off. But that's my basic thoughts on how Universal Credit has served me for the last year. And I am going to do more on that. I'm going to do a post that is a bit more of a, a meaningful reflection on that once it's actually ended. And also, I've been putting together a spreadsheet with all the figures on. So, all the income, all the outgoings, all the money I've received from them. So that I can, A, compare it to working tax credits. Because a lot of people say it's not worth going on to UC, it's not worth the hassle. But I am fairly sure that I have brought in more money through being on universal credit than on working tax credits and there could be all sorts of factors involved in that one is that I am not on the proper universal credit I'm on a protected year so that means that each month I'm getting additional money that I probably wouldn't get if I was on the standard one and having to meet the minimum income floor um, yeah there'll be all sorts of reasons why that is and it won't be a simple case of oh I look I made more money there will be all sorts of factors involved. Um, but I won't be sad to be off universal credit. It's not been an enormous hassle because if you're organised and you're self-employed and you're already managing your paperwork and your finances, it's a little bit of a pain in the backside, but it's not momentous if you know what you're doing already. It's just an additional spreadsheet. Um, because all you're doing is just putting in different dates so you're not having to do extra work in that respect. You're just having to make sure that you're covering a different month because my month runs from the 21st of the month to the 20th. And I already have my 
calendar year financial months, which is the beginning of the month to the end of the month. And then I also have my self-assessment year, which runs from April to April. So I have all different spreadsheets for looking at the overall of my personal income, looking at the overall as far as the business is concerned. And then of course, I've had this universal credit one, which thankfully will be gone. So it'll be one tiny less thing to worry about. But as I say, it's not a massive big deal. So that's that really. Um, yeah, there'll be more updates coming. I've got hopefully the last meeting, which is about me trying to get some of the money back from the savings I mistakenly um, put into my income claim. I don't know how that's going to go. I don't have high expectations, but it wouldn't be an enormous amount of money anyway because it wouldn't actually reflect the amount of money that I've um, declared as savings. It would be a proportion of because um, universal credit is proportional of your income. It's not everything. So it wouldn't be like all of the savings, which I declared, it would be a proportion of it. But I thought I would pursue it because it might be useful to somebody else who has misdeclared either too much or too little and wants to know how to navigate that. So this will be me navigating that system. Because this must happen all the time. They make the system so complicated. It must be really easy to get things wrong. And I think there are probably other things which I declared which I probably shouldn't have done. Like um, surveys income where I earned gift cards rather than actual cash. You know what? I don't care anymore. I just don't care. It's not worth it. <laughs> That's the end of that. Anyway, so here we are. It is uh, Wednesday morning. I am heading off to my Wednesday morning clean. It's going to be a hot one today. So I've found myself some shorts to wear. They're long shorts like Capri pants. I don't do actual shorts. Let's have a look at that temperature today because that house gets really hot when I'm working upstairs. It looks like it's going to hit 25 today, but not until 4 o'clock. So, hopefully it won't be too bad. It's quite cloudy, but it's really close and really stuffy. So, let's get going. I meant to add and keep forgetting to add that I harvested my first set of chitted supermarket potatoes about a week ago now. They're small. I didn't think they were going to be that great. You could tell by the way they were sprouting that they weren't doing things normally. Um, but I did get the equivalent of, of a bowl full of potatoes and they were really nice and I ate them. Um, I had a second set chitting which I've now put into the ground. The using tomatoes as a slug repellent doesn't really work. I've ended up just sprinkling salt on the concrete around the base of the pots, which may be having some small effects. I just need them to hold their own enough until they're big enough to look after themselves. Um, So I'm hoping that uh, I get something out of that. Broad beans are still producing broad beans. I've just put in my last two seedlings outside and they're growing fast. So I should have an, uh, a supply of broad beans going through into the end of the season now. Tomatoes are growing not amazingly fast. It's not been a good year for growing veg. We get a few really hot days and then days and days of cold, wet weather, and it's not what they want. I'm keeping on top of the watering by using my grey water from out from the, the flat, uh, which is just helping things tick over. 
it's difficult when it's pots because they dry out so fast because the, you know, there's nowhere really for the roots to go. But, you know, we are used to this because we've been here for six and a half years now. So it's not that difficult to navigate. I'm sure many of you have noticed here in the UK, roadwork season has begun. And right outside my window, they are digging up the whole of the crossroads. They're putting in traffic lights. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be noisy. I wonder how long this is gonna last for. I might have to make all my videos in the evening about two weeks ago, a man came along in a fluorescent jacket and spray painted lots of marks all over the crossroads. So I knew it was coming and today it begins. Oh, they've got proper road diggers. They've taken up the concrete a lot. It's going to be fun.